Hey folks, and welcome back to Reality Check and to the second part of our special all about PC graphics settings and what the heck they actually mean. Last week we covered resolution, anti-aliasing, v-sync and tessellation. But now it's time for the sequel, which I'm affectionately calling Revenge of the Acronyms. <laughs> Ambient occlusion is really all about making fake shadows. Now, in a perfect world of game design, lighting engines would just simulate the behavior of real light using global illumination. This is what's used for animation in movies, and it works out shadows by calculating the precise color of each individual pixel based on the overall amount of light that's hitting it. Now, that sounds complicated, and it is, which is why it works well for a pre-rendered scene, but is generally far too processor intensive to render on the fly in games. Enter ambient occlusion. It adds fake shadows where we should expect to see them. So how does it do it? Well, first off, let's think about lighting in general in your average game. The source is ambient light, and this is basically a more simple simulation of global illumination, with the shadows based entirely on whether or not something is blocking the ambient light source. Now, this on its own tends to result in a rather flat light with less shadowing than you might expect. Ambient occlusion comes in and estimates where these extra shadows should be based on some rather clever ray tracing calculations. Simply put, it measures how much ambient light or rays are blocked by other nearby things. So if an object or surface is blocked in by other objects, less light can reach it, which means the surface will be in shadow. Creases, corners, hollows, and the undersides of things tend to have a lot of ambient occlusion. So that's ambient occlusion in general, but what about SSAO and HBAO and HDAO? Well, SSAO stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion and was actually pioneered by the folks at Crytek and first used in the original Crisis. It's basically all about sampling the depth of other pixels around an area, and from that it calculates the shadow. HBAO, or Horizon-Based Ambient Occlusion, is better and generates higher quality SSAO by increasing the number of samples per pixel, but as a result, it's a tad more demanding on your hardware. It samples the environment at half resolution, though, to lessen the power required. And what about HDAO, you ask? Well, honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a member of the Highland Dancers Association of Ontario. Man, those guys have the best SEO. Oh, you mean high definition ambient occlusion? Ah yes, well that's broadly similar to HBAO, except that it's AMD's own version of ambient occlusion. Phew, well that's the complicated one out of the way. So let's move on to an easy one with FOV. Not POV incidentally, as some YouTube commenter in my previous video thought. POV, eh? I wonder where you heard that one before. I mean obviously I have no idea what that is, I've never heard of it. Ever. What is it? Price of vegetables? FOV, or field of view, on the other hand, is the extent of the observable game world that is seen on the display at any given moment. The wider the angle, the more you see. So, does this hit your PC's performance? Well, it shouldn't much, if anything at all. Sure, there might be more objects on screen at a wider angle, but they're also slightly further away, so depending on how the game loads and textures, it should balance out. Okay, next up is DOF or depth of field. Right, now hold your hand up in front of your face like this. Yeah, do it now, and focus on your hand. Right, it should be all sharp and looking great, but everything behind it, including this monitor screen, should be all blurry and out of focus. That's because of depth of field. Technically, it means the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that both appear acceptably sharp or in focus. Now, as a video producer, I work with depth of field every day. Doing so lets you get that gorgeous, out of focus background effect of photography, so handsome. And also video. Check out this footage I shot for the Nvidia Shield review. Notice how the sexy, sexy tablet is in focus, but the ugly, ugly controller isn't. This is aesthetically pleasing because it's kind of how we see things in real life. Also, did I mention the controller's ugly? I'm pretty sure I did. You see, when we look at a scene, we don't see everything in sharp focus at once. In fact, our eyes have a very narrow point of sharp focus, just a couple of degrees, but they dart about very quickly when we observe a scene, painting in the detail as they go. 
Depth of field can work really well in games, especially ones with first person view. It doesn't make sense for those trees all the way off in the distance to be in focus all the time, for example. Also, by blurring backgrounds, you can hide those nasty low resolution textures from view too. Bonus. Now, I've seen depth of field implemented to varying degrees of success. It's a staple of lighting mods or ENBs in Skyrim, but it's a little heavy handed and it can be quite jarring to see it blurring as you go. Possibly the best example I've seen though is in Wolfenstein The New Order. It's subtle enough but works to great effect in the interior sections of the Resistance hideout. Everything just looks gorgeous. Now, in terms of a performance hit, it shouldn't be too significant, perhaps a few frames here or there. So, if it looks good, use it. AF, or anisotropic filtering, is all about tactical blurring. Games need to find sneaky ways to run smoothly wherever possible, and one of the oldest of these methods involves making surface textures blurrier the further away they are. Without anisotropic filtering enabled, the result is what looks like hard cuts between different levels of blurriness as you look across, say, a floor texture. Texture filtering works to blend those levels of detail, resulting in a smoother, less noticeable transition between detailed, closer textures and blurry, distant ones. There are other types of filtering like bilinear and trilinear, but generally AF is king and can be set to maximum without impacting your performance too heavily. Okay, well that's about it for this episode, but there are still a number of graphics terms I've not had a chance to get to grips with, like physics or post-processing or motion blur and others. So, if you'd like a part three, let me know in the comments down below, or by sending me one of those newfangled tweets I've heard so much about to at camfrazrob. Okay, thanks for watching, see you next week.